Hello, I'm Martin Brown, a network engineer for a major retailer based in the UK and an ambassador for Juniper Networks. And welcome to the Switching Basics Learning Byte. In this Learning Byte, we're going to discuss the basics of switching on Juniper EX series switches. And in the subsequent Learning Byte, we're going to talk through the spanning tree protocol and how to configure it on EX series switches. So let's begin by looking at how computers would communicate on a network. Here we have a very simple network comprising of a single switch and four workstations. Now let's say that workstation 1 wishes to communicate with workstation 3. It will send a frame to the switch and in the frame it will have a destination address which is the MAC address of workstation 3. The switch itself has a very special table in its memory called a MAC address table. And from this, it can tell which MAC addresses are accessible through which ports. So in this case, it can tell that the MAC address for workstation 3 is accessible through port number 1. Initially, after the power is cycled, or the first time the switch is booted, the table containing the list of MAC addresses will be empty. Now it has to then be populated with the addresses of the connected devices. Now let's say that in this scenario here the switch has just been rebooted. Workstation 1 needs to talk to workstation 3 exactly as before and it sends a frame. Now the switch will obviously listen and it will know from the source address of that frame that workstation 1 is connected to port 0. But it doesn't know how to get to MAC address for workstation 3. So what it will do is it will broadcast through every active port this request saying who has the MAC address of workstation 3. When workstation 3 responds it can then update the table as it now knows off of which port it's located. So I've remotely connected to a Juniper EX series switch and the CLI within this switch is exactly the same as you would expect on a SRX or on any other routers. If I enter the command show version we can see that it is a EX2200 it has 24 ports and it has 4 SFP uplink ports. We can also see that it's running Junos version 13.2 Okay, so now we know how many interfaces are on this device and we can now have a look at the MAC address table to see what MAC addresses this switch is aware of. And to do that the command is simply show Ethernet switching table. And we can see it's currently aware of all of these. And at the top it has this asterisk. Now what this means is if an address comes in that doesn't match any of these, then match the asterisk. It's a wildcard. And if it receives an address it's not aware of, then it floods it out of all interfaces. Now further down we'll also see that we've got several MAC addresses coming out of the same interface. Or if you recall, this is actually a thousand base T SFP and it's connected to another switch. Therefore, it is perfectly possible to have multiple MAC addresses coming through the same interface. Now if we want to clear this table to maybe simulate the power being recycled, we can enter the command clear Ethernet switching table. Then if we show the Ethernet switching table again, we can see that it has now reduced the number of addresses. Now some of these have actually cleared, but they've come back very quickly. Uh, this is because devices are current on the network they're talking.
So this brings us to the end of this learning bite. But before we go, let's have a quick recap of what we've discussed. We talked about when network devices communicate with each other, they use the MAC address to determine where the frame should go. And that switches build a MAC address table in their memory so that they know exactly through which port they should send the frame. And then finally, as we saw in the demonstration, it is possible for you to have multiple MAC addresses coming off of a single port in the case of a trunk link. I hope this learning bite has been informative for you and you've enjoyed watching. I look forward to the next learning bite where we discuss the spanning tree protocol. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.